Uh, salams and welcome to 420 grams. Uh, it's been a while. It's we've been waiting patiently for the moment when uh, I when all the contractual and other formalities would be sorted out and we would have uh, the main man back on the show uh, to talk about all things senior national team and then some. Uh, if you're still guessing who we're talking about, if you haven't seen the thumbnail or any of that, it is of course. Uh, the head coach of the senior men's national team, Mr. Igor Stimach, uh, back on 420 grams uh, to talk about, of course, the immediate future, uh, Igor, and and uh, also hopefully the next two years and your plans and what you're uh, going to do with a group of boys now that you are very, very familiar with. Uh, how was the training session this evening? Maybe we can start the conversation from there. Let's start with the greetings to all the viewers and everyone who is following your show, my dear Salant. Uh, I'm a little bit sad your, your, your uh, uh, naughty boy, uh, Pandit, is not here with us, you know. Yes, so, unfortunately uh, he's be... tied up with the, with the Cricket World Cup uh, today. Oh, the... yes, yes, there are certain priorities definitely <laughs> in regards to the sport, his favorite sport. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Nice there is you. nothing he there is nothing he can learn about football there at these games you know he's watching <laughs> at the moment so <laughs> anyway yeah. i'm happy to be back with the boys although it's it's a short time short yeah. time always complaining about time provided to us but that's it is what it is you know we are try, trying to use the time the best possible way we can and uh, certain problems are always there we need to mention them definitely because we need to inform our supporters and followers. We have uh, four players with uh, carrying injuries from the last ISL games, and they are very doubtful for the first game. And we speak about Anwar, Subashish, Brandon, and Manvir. So I'm not the coach who will push my players like some coaches from ISL. I need to mention this, you know, because I care about health of our players. Even there were some complaints, unreasonable complaint, club complaints in the in the uh, recent past. Uh, without any reason whatsoever, uh, so these players will not be not be in the squad for the first game definitely because they have minor injuries. Hmm. Com when you say complaints, uh, you go, uh, you, what, what do you mean? Uh, I don't like complaints as in injury complaints. They had some. No, you remember or? in 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 all these what was going on a few weeks prior to the contract extension, there were some rubbish talks and some uh, some uh, media lies there uh, published from various sources, obviously, and one of those was in regards to Dashi Kurunian injury, which was an absolute lie published mm. in the media i'm not sure for what reason because to to go uh, such a hard on the medical team uh, 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 from the national team it was rubbish you know and because these guys are working their socks off here with the boys when they come from the clubs to take the the proper care about them and they deserve all the credit for all mm. what's being done with the national team in regards to the result to the fitness level and escaping from all kind of injuries of course we cannot escape from injuries 100 percent every time because when mm. there are clashes when there are mechanical contacts physical contacts in tackles with with other players which are physically strong then uh, some things happen like it happened to Ashik and that's part of the sport nothing we can do there but to say that we are not taking proper care or that we didn't take uh, mm -hmm. uh, after injury happened proper care about player it's something really really bad not good mm -hmm. all right um, so so the four players that you did mention uh, they, they missed the first game uh, do you think they are likely to be in a better position uh, if it's now a knockout tournament uh, so if we do play a second game, uh, do you think they'll be likely available? No, listen, we had the two training sessions today and yesterday since we arrived here and uh, I didn't allow them to train because it was heavy rain and uh, the training pitches we are provided here are soft. So I didn't want to risk any of these boys because some of them have uh, groin problems, some of them hamstring problems. <laughs> Uh, Subashish is maybe the one who might be available in a certain few minutes on the pitch, but I, I don't think we're going to take that risk, to be honest. All right. 
All right. So, um, I don't know. Do, do we uh, talk a bit about uh, your next opponents, uh, Igor, in the form of Malaysia? Are you looking forward yeah. to this challenge? Um, I know. Th- and, and firstly, what do you make of uh, the sort of training facilities and, and, and other kind of setup that you have seen uh, in Malaysia? And, and, and what kind of interaction have you had with the national team as well as the support staff uh, there? Listen, I've been researching about Malaysian football for the past two weeks, apart from uh, having uh, contract extension talks and being focused there to finish that as soon as possible in the interest of the national team and our future work. I was mm-hmm. also spending lots of time on uh, researching because I'm not looking upon only those teams who are in front of us, who we are chasing. I'm also taking good care and researching those who are chasing us. And one of those who who are very seriously chasing us is Malaysia. I need to tell you that I'm really surprised and also happy for them because it's obvious they they keep everything in their hands and they are making sure that their future is becoming much brighter than it was in the recent years. Mm. I can tell you that the facilities I have seen, not live, but on YouTube from their main club, which is owned by the Prince of Malaysia, Mm. who holds all the all the tires in his hands about uh, Malaysian football are top class facilities with couple of training pitches with indoor provided with the uh, gym spectacular gym with everything what needs to be there for the for the club and for the national team obviously uh, also results of Malaysia are are uh, very good especially in the last 12 months only in this year they they suffered only one defeat and that was defeat from uh, against Thailand away in the qualifiers 3-0 apart from that they defeated everyone at home six games six wins one of these wins is against uh, Thailand 1-0 i think there was uh, Kyrgyzstan also uh, Singapore, Bangladesh, so six games and they had two fantastic draws uh, last month in September FIFA window. They went to China, they played fantastic game against host China, which they were, they deserve to win by, by good margin, I need to tell you, because they created seven, eight fantastic chances, which they didn't materialize, but the game finished 1-1. They played really well and the second game also they played in China against Syria. They were 2-0 down but came back, bounced back to get a draw too at the end of the day. So the only game this year they lost against Thailand away, which is significant. And looking at what happened and what changes they suffered inside the team, it was quite obvious that the last four players they added to the team they had before are naturalized players who had great experience, they played at the highest level of football at certain a certain stage of their career and they added significant value to this team. This team is stable now, this team is compact, it's balanced well, it's good in transition both ways and they know what they are doing on the pitch, I would say. And having in mind that they will be 90,000 supporters, Mm. Uh, we need to say that there is a good reason why they invited us and accepted us here because it's a great chance for them to, after having two and a half week camp because their league was stopped on the 1st October, it's quite obvious what their intentions are. And I need to say it's not a comfortable situation for us. But we are here, mm. uh, uh, we don't have anywhere to run, so we need to come out, face them on the day, in two day time and uh, <clears> do our best. <throat> to defeat them and go to the final. So it's not going to be pleasant, I need to tell you, and we need to work our socks off to to earn to earn something of this game. Also looking and analyzing their, their calendar, that's something which I wish to happen in India, you know, because mm. they, their league uh, starts end of February and goes all the way until end of December. Uh, but considering that they, that they made a good mixture and good balance about national team camps, it's quite obvious how much care they taking about national team FIFA windows. So I will tell you now, I pointed out here, mm. uh, in in November now, they, had a, they have a three weeks camp for the national team. Their league stops from 30th October to 23rd November. Right. 
Now in October they had a three-week camp also. First October they stopped the league and it will go on 27 December only. Mm. In, in September also they had a nearly three-week camp for the FIFA window. League was stopped again. In June they had 10 days camp prior to the game and in March they had a 10 days camp prior to the game. So it's a well-balanced and planned calendar and it's something well taken care of. Hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, the, the, the point that you brought up about foreign-born uh, players being coming back and playing is also an interesting one. Um, and uh, it's a long-running debate in Indian football, as you are, I'm sure, aware uh, about you know players of Indian origin and all, all of that. Uh, unfortunately, without the dual citizenship uh, allowance, uh, Unfortunately, that kind of entire conversation comes to an immediate uh, dead end. But I believe the federation has now. Set I wouldn't up some say kind I wouldn't say dual citizenship is needed there. You know, OTSI card is enough for FIFA, so you can represent your country. You don't need dual citizenship. Why? It's only one regulation from the government which can allow. PIO players to represent India and when when many people debate about this and when they ask what would be the reason the reason is very simple why every and each country in the world is using that tool to become better and more successful because if we are going to wait 2047 then I don't have problem with using only Indian players you will wait mm. on the result until 2047, and until we develop a couple of generations of good players, until we start playing football for 10 and a half months, until we get 20 teams in the ISL competing and I league also in leagues before, until we develop and structure our football in a proper way. But uh, if we want to, for football, to develop its culture inside the country. We need immediate success as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And to have a bypass in the meantime, while we are doing work on the grassroots programs, on the developmental programs, while we are spreading football to each corner of the country and, and attaching kids to a football and a game, spreading the passion about football. We need to do, we need to show them something. We cannot allow our kids in India to be supporters of Real Madrid, of Barcelona, and these clubs which got nothing to do with India. We need these boys to start following ISL clubs and I League clubs to be yeah. to, to, to uh, making bigger pool of funds, of supporters of football, uh, developing the football culture and supporting the Indian team. We need mm. idols for these boys who are there. Uh, becoming a football followers, you know, we mm. cannot rely only on Sunil Chetri as idol and god of football. Of course, now we we are happy to have uh, Sahal, let's say, who is uh, a rising star and who is the one showing that has that potential, and Anwar Ali, you know, who is. As far as I'm concerned, one player who could have immediate effect and play in much better league than ISL. And I just Absolutely. love to, to mention that, that I would love to see hunger in him going out and challenging himself and not staying here, enjoying comfortable zone in ISL pace football. Yeah, with age also on his side, I think, uh, I think uh, and now a few years of, uh, you know, ISL money also. So there's a bit of uh, something in the bank with which he can... Uh, even go out and, and, and see how that goes. Uh, I want to come back to uh, Mardeka. It's the first uh, uh, sort of tournament <laughs> or engagement that you're uh, facing since the contract extension. Uh, what was, uh, and, and we can connect it back to those extension talks a, a bit, Igor. What were, what were the kind of conversations? What were you asking for? What was the Federation asking for? And in the end, what where was the meeting ground? What what, did, what, what are the kind of what, yeah? What are we looking at? Listen, what what was happening in the past four years? I didn't want to repeat such situations. So for me, the most important thing at the beginning was the stable stuff surrounding the work with the players in the national team. And firstly, I think here about my assistant Mahesh, who I wanted to improve his contract. And we did it. And I'm very happy about that. Our team manager, Velu Damayani, uh, making him sure about, about 
his salary, his contract to have him in peace, let's say, and focused on the job he needs to, to be done perfectly, which is a massive job for the team manager when we are together. I wanted uh, to make sure that we have a sports psychologist with us on the on the basis when we have FIFA windows host, so he will be joining us for every FIFA window and he will be available for us and not coming for free like it was the case before. And obviously a uh, match analyst who we are kind of renting from Goa and I appreciate this time also to my dear friend uh, Manolo who is not not having problems with with giving us their match analyst who is wonderful to us and doing a great job. Joy Gabriel is fantastic match analyst and it's it's really helpful to us. So we couldn't ask for more and I am well aware the talks and negotiations took the time but and I was well aware about limited budget of, of AIFF. For the rest of the things, I don't have any reason not to trust our people in AIFF chairs because what they what they told me and what they promised to me, I have full trust that everything will be fulfilled starting from the next year. We are also well aware that nothing can be done in regards to the calendar this season. Calendar is out. It's obviously it cannot be changed if what it if it was not possible to change it for the Asian Games, so we cannot expect anything will be changed uh, from now on. So we somehow need to plan everything precisely and make sure that we survive throughout November FIFA window and March FIFA window until the end of the season. That's all what I can tell you, because we're not going to get any special days for the preparation. Just to let you know now, we have a November camp, which will be given extra days. I'm talking about extra days, not days which are connected to the FIFA windows. Clubs are there. You need to unmute yourself. Uh, so we're going to get players all together seven days, seven to eight days prior to the game against Kuwait. And the reason that's the reason why I requested to, to have camp organized in Dubai. Mm. Immediately after after the ISL games, players will need to to come to Dubai for the five six day camp, and the reason is very simple. From Dubai, we have a good direct connection to Kuwait City, not wasting time on the airport. So yeah. everything needs to be planned perfectly, and then again after the game against uh, Kuwait, there at their soil, we need to come very next day uh, via Dubai to Orisha and. We have only two days to prepare the game against Qatar, so that will mm -hmm. be it. Apart from that, uh, in the December and January, nothing exclusive will happen, I need to tell you, because last ISL game by the calendar is 29 December. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get together only on a New Year day. First in the evening, players will uh, assemble together and we're going to travel immediately to Doha and prepare 10 days without having friendly games or anything like that there because I will try with my staff to do best possible thing to bring the, with some high intensity and good planning sessions uh, to bring players in a position to handle three games in seven, yeah, eight days seven against, against very serious opponents, which is not going to be easy, but we're going to do our best. Yeah, it, it's a, it, it's a, it's the work is definitely cut out uh, for you and and your staff and the team. Uh, it's encouraging to hear uh, Igor that uh, not just in this contract uh, extension uh, negotiation, it's not just your uh, sort of role, but also the entire support staff that is being considered and and has been uh, hopefully, like you were saying, taken care of. And, and no, listen. Uh... It's, this is not about me. I am the front man. Okay. Mm. And I am organizing work and giving instructions. But without people surrounding me and helping yeah. me, nothing would have, have done be done in, in such a way and good way. Mm. Uh, starting from the selection of the players, suffering for the first two years when everybody was guessing what we are doing. We were obviously suffering and then pandemic period and then just playing away games and again suffering and suffering but we were very convinced about what needs to be done and what yeah. is going to happen at the end of this suffering road you know so we are in a good position now but still not i would say in excellent position because we need to sort out the things which i was mentioning before which are connected to the 
priorities in Indian football, about national team needs, not hurting anyone, because we are not asking anyone to hurt himself, but just to think about others also apart from himself. So hmm. everything can be done nicely. And I also think whenever the time is given for the national <laughs> team, if I was a coach in the in the ISIL clubs, I'm telling you honestly now, I, I would love breaks to reset my team, to work individually with Indian players, to improve their their qualities, their performances, mm. to bring them to bring them into the higher level of football, to to bring more capacities into their legs, more energy, and to go on with ISL then again. Because when the ISL is going on, you have only two or three teams doing well. Yeah. What about the rest of them? They need time to reset, to do an extra work, to change things, to try things. So mm. it's beneficial for everyone. So we shouldn't be complaining as, about so much because I'm not asking anything for myself. I'm asking mm. for this for this what, nation. What What is the resistance to the idea of taking those breaks, uh, Igor? Why? I mean, why not? No, what what I see now that things would be possible from the next season, you know. Mm. So, why not for now? We all we are all quiet and we all know the answers. This is my answer to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, fair enough. Uh, there's been uh, a lot made in uh, the media over the past few weeks and more about all kinds of things, uh, you know, in, in a way, kind of giving the sense to those fans who are uh, watching from the outside and I'm perhaps unaware of what is going on behind the scenes, that there are two different sides with different agendas in this. When, like you're pointing out, and similarly, I'm sure club owners and, and people who are managing clubs, uh, as well as those who run the league, as well as, of course, the federation, <clears throat> Everyone will say that we are all in it with the same objective, uh, which is to take this sport in this country as far as possible. So, so why are we not doing that? <laughs> That's the question now. <laughs> no, I, I mean, because, uh, the, because in between, I think that there was uh, a, an old st uh, story that came out about this astrologer and then there were after that mm -hmm. links in the media to you taking a job in with Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, I will, well. you, yeah, yeah. I will just uh, shortly address to this uh, mm -hmm. astrology a story was uh, pure pure uh, uh, rubbish thrown at me with one and a half year of distance when such things were happening and going on. Mm. An astrologer had nothing to do with the team selection with players. I was educating him about football mm. and the football game and mm. telling him how football functions because he was introduced to me as someone who would like to explore possibility of having influence on sport in general. Mm. And I was never aware of his involvement, contractual involvement with an AIFF. That's mm. all I can tell you. So I was sparing my time, which was not much of a time, to mm. help him understand football and how it functions. Better. Mm. Okay. No, that, the that, other that's a, point. That's a pretty good deal, point. I have to say. I, I don't yeah. mind. Uh, I don't mind getting paid to hang out with you and learn a bit about football. Yeah. The other <laughs> thing is, which nobody told me that there was a contract sign already. So, but let's yeah, leave yeah, yeah. that to those who yeah. did it yeah. behind my back. The other thing, hmm. which you ask me, there was a clear offer on the table. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And From I Boston. asked. Hmm. Yes. And I hmm. asked them kindly because of my involvement with india mm. and at that moment i was at the asian games in mm. my hotel room mm. i said to them i'm loyal to my job and mm. i cannot discuss such things in such moment if mm. you want to be patient we can discuss things after i have talks with the people who employed me here and mm. i beg you mm. please do not put my name anywhere in public mm. And that was the deal, and I appreciate uh, the guys who were in contact with me, not 
spreading my name around but it came out of the other side i think serbian side because they had their candidate for the job there so they kind of wanted to make it a challenge yeah. no these things always get out uh, anyway one way or the other from one side yeah. or the other uh, but but so so the interesting part of this for me uh, igor is that uh, you want to stay on with india yeah uh, versus a team that is uh, potentially a world cup team a uh, european championship team uh, playing at uh, perhaps a far higher level uh, what may what what are the factors that led you to make that decision let's assume that both the jobs are on the table still uh, yeah. what, on what basis are you making the choice i had uh, this was not the first offer i i didn't want to discuss i need to tell you that and i'm not talking publicly because i want to stay focused and loyal to the project we started here you know and after after going through so many difficulties for four years without putting and prioritizing salary or money which looks enormous for you here in india which is not even 25 percent which what should i get on the market and i was offered also but refused i'm i stick to something which i'm loyal to and these are my players and our goals i believe and i have faith in our team in our youngsters in our senior players who are so positive and so committed to the goals we have in ahead of us mm. so we, now i still have patience and i will wait to see what happens next season you know are the things are there to change and are they changing in the favor of the national team and then we're going to see what is the hour what's our future the easiest thing for me is to walk away that can do anyone you know yeah but yeah. can you succeed with india that's that's the question not many not many coaches can do that mm. and uh, i think in a way that that's also the attraction because if you do succeed uh with uh, with india i think the, the the kind of love and adulation the sheer scale of it that, that you will receive and of course your players but you and, remember that was that yourself. was the only reason why i accepted this challenge because mm. of the size of it what mm. what else could have attracted me to india you tell me mm. from mm. the from the part of the world i'm coming from and football football level i'm coming from mm. Mm. apart maybe, from maybe, salary, maybe the warm the warm salary. weather <laughs> come on <laughs> Uh, let's let's be honest you know without yeah. underestimating anyone or anything which happened in indian football many good things happened in the in the sure, recent sure. past in indian mm. football and even when i speak about problems i never forget to mention even the the things which were very good and which are benefiting uh, indian football which are coming from fsdl mm. but uh, come on we cannot look at the bright side only we need to discuss the problems and believe me whenever you hear me in public talking about problems or criticizing something mm. prior to that i always discuss these things internally in the house mm. and when i see that things are not changing then i have the full right mm. to explain to everyone what's going on because mm. i have that as a part of my contract yeah, speaking I mean, I, speaking I, I, honestly okay. publicly and informing public about what needs to be done because i'm employed consultant by the aiff mm. as the head coach yeah. and my yeah. part of my job is mentioning the problems talking about problems and providing solutions mm. simple as that yeah yeah and as head of the national team i i think that's also something that differentiates you from let's say Uh, a club coach right where, where your loyalties are to the club and uh, the ownership maybe the ownership maybe the fans however it works uh, but with the national team you are uh, in the end you're working for the people of india and you uh, the, the because the role of the national federation is to grow the sport uh, not not uh, irrespective of what else happens and in that sense uh, in that sense you are the chief spokesman for uh, for the, for indian football as well and and so so do you think going forward over the next 2 years igor we'll be able to have more of these honest conversations and and less of the other stuff that often uh, distracts and derails uh, you know even whatever forward movement there is listen i'm always honest and open i i don't know other way to speak simple as that i'm not playing politics i'm not uh, trying to win votes uh, 
speaking nice things and not thinking like that that way mm. you know mm. so i'm just being honest being who i am that's the only way i i i know no mm. other way for me exists if you speak about difference between club coaches and national team coaches uh, i have different opinion upon that mm. i think that we are like doctors they all have the same goal to save human lives it's the same goal it's just a, if we talk about approach you have some doctors who will uh, be bribed to receive someone who doesn't deserve to be received first and someone who's got the need to see the doctor first he will be waiting there you know in the football pyramid at the top is the senior national team of the country and all the coaches involved in work never mind the the age underage groups or senior teams or whatever they should work in the interest of the national team because that's the priority that's on top of the pyramid of football mm -hmm. and why the football exists to have a strong national team so what purpose is to have a coach who will think only about his results and his contract extension mm -hmm. there is no purpose he will not serve him or the club or the club he serves mm -hmm. he serves no one but legacy about foreign coaches in india should be producing great indian football players because they will not develop foreign players they sign these are developed players they cannot help yeah. them anymore they shouldn't and these players didn't come here definitely for some extra work some yeah. of them are great professionals great examples to do to our youngsters they are taking good care of them but some also are less of them not not so much of them you know they are kind of enjoying the life here and picking up salary but yeah. we need to we need to be well aware that's 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 what it is you know that's life but mm. primarily primarily we should see and i always point out manolo and really if i leave one day uh, uh today tomorrow next week or in a two or four years time i i would love to see manolo on my position because mm. by his approach and trusting and having faith in young indian players and working in the club with one of the lowest budget in the league mm. gaining results showing the trust into indian youngsters opening the door to them and mm. carefully choosing foreign players which are good examples to those youngsters to follow you know so i always point out someone who deserves and he really deserves our appreciation for the work which has been done there you know and we need to we need to keep him here as long as possible because every year he develops two three new indian players in in the squad and and at the end they they finish in in the senior national team because i trust in his work and in what i see in these players how much they develop themselves mm -hmm. All right. Uh, good shout out to Manolo Marquez. There, hopefully, we can also have him uh, on the show and uh, and have a chat with him and understand a little bit more about his philosophy and and some of the aspects that Igor was mentioning. Uh, Igor, now uh, coming to the national team and your plans for the next two years, maybe you can uh, maybe we can outline <laughs> first since you mentioned the age group teams as well uh, and how everyone needs to kind of work towards a cohesive. Uh, objective or some kind of goal setting needs to be in place uh, what what is that uh, going to look like over the next two year period if if we can uh... yeah obviously first we're going to wait to see if the things are going to change in the future starting from the next season if mm. so then then i will spend much more time in india and try to influence uh, obviously with with my uh, uh, best intentions we made the uh, Mahesh, the head coach of under 23. So yeah. I, I will be supervising this work and helping him there to, to influence the philosophy of the senior national team into a new generation of under 23 players, mm. uh, which are the players for the we count in the future, you know, definitely. But uh, uh, I would love to take more care about under 19 group also, mm. because somehow most of these boys are lost somewhere around you know not gaining enough time in the in the in their clubs in their teams they've been they've been pushed somehow away and not uh, being given enough games which is which is sad because we had this gap for for uh for too many years you know because we were 
somehow developing players until the age of 17. Mm. Although we could witness last last few weeks there was lots of cheating, which is not good, not beneficial to us when we speak about cheating about the age, you know. And yeah, then yeah. we ask our, we ask ourselves why we are we successful until the age of sixteen, and then we disappear because we cheat. We need to accept that we should. Yeah. We need to stop doing that because that that is taking us nowhere. Uh, the, the thing is now that we need to have organized competitions for the under-17, under-19. We need to provide enough games, enough competitive football for them. If we expect these boys to take over from the actual senior team players to get them ready on time for the senior team football. Mm. And apart from that, obviously, we need to we need to make wider ISL uh, until we get to 20 clubs there and uh, the league which will go on for 10 months without... without uh, uh, too many breaks apart from the national team, only one break, which is normal in the football world these days. Four yeah. to six weeks uh, a holiday and then let's go again. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, and you're, you're, so obviously, I guess the next year will be a big one, I, I think, in any case, uh, for on, on multiple fronts. Uh, it will also be, I think, the last year of the current master rights agreement. So that will be an interesting thing to follow in terms of how those developments go. Uh, uh, well, anything else uh, specifically with the team right now, since you, you are, uh, you know, with the team uh, that you would like to point out or add to us in terms of either specific players? Or... No, no, we are we are not in a pleasant situation here because of what happened last couple of days here. I'm not sure uh, how many information got uh, to you in India, but. Uh, Two nights ago at half past one in, in the night, we received information about Palestine pulling out of the tournament and then a new proposal came from Malaysian Federation for us to push our game on 11th instead of 13th to play against Tajikistan. And then there was an immediate early morning meeting uh, held on here with the organizers and us coaches mm -hmm. from Tajikistan and India with our team managers and we strongly refuse to change anything because Sandesh and Sunil for the private reason were, were left home. They they just joined us today and they, they had a training practice with us first day today. Mm. So we could we couldn't accept obviously any changes, especially because uh, it's only three teams now left and the only reasonable thing to do is to accept that Tajikistan without fighting will go to the final and we need to play Malaysia, which, which has been... Uh, in the camp for last two and a half weeks uh, and it is what it is so uh, even if we win against Malaysia in this game we need to go and face Tajikistan which is also a young competitive side which will have a fresh legs somehow yeah. and wait on us in the final so it's not going to be easy but that's a great challenge what I'm thinking most of at the moment it's not winning the tournament to be honest mm. but not not to get anyone injured because of the importance of November camp you know, mm. our players are playing and they are all involved in the ISL games. Uh, we follow them closely. Uh, and I need to inform you because all of you guys following ISL games, you hear and there see some nice moments from some players. And then everyone starts mentioning it. At the moment, national team door is closed. Mm. I have my team which I worked with for four years, over four yeah. years. And I'm not changing that team for some uh, nice seconds in ISL from some, some players, you know. They need yeah. to prove themselves for a longer period of time to enter the national team and to get the chance to show what they can do with the national team at the international level. For now, we have the team. We have on my list at the moment 39 players, <coughs> which are competing for 23 positions. Yeah. And that's it. No one else can enter there. We lost Ashi Kurunian, which is a big, big blow for us, I need to tell you, because with the football we decided to play, with the, with the philosophy we implemented here, his aggressiveness and his yeah. uh, high press capacity, and and everything what he brings on the pitch within him it's a big blow for us but mm -hmm. we need to we need to be well aware that somehow we need to replace him and we're going to do that mm. uh, who might you be looking at because that is like absolutely it's a massive loss and a critical position 
uh, as well. So, um, I, mean, I mean, there is now reasonable depth uh, at positions, even among the set of players that you've been working with, 39, 40 of these players. Uh, so, who, who uh, what are your options looking like at this point? No, obviously, the first choice player at the moment is Mahesh Naurem. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Without any doubt, because football he is playing at the moment is by far the best in ISL. Mm. Uh, and it's not only about certain moments inside the game. He's continuous threat. Whoever yeah. is Bengal is playing wherever they are playing. So yeah. you can always expect wonders from him. And that's what he is giving, you know. And he absolutely deserves to, to be first choice uh, in replace of Ashik. And it is what it is. I just hope he will have a great game here on 13th. Mm. You you wouldn't like to put, play him a little more central, Mahesh? Uh, no, we already we already tried that, you know. But yeah. having Sahal on this position and uh, yeah. re revitalizing Sahal's somehow position, because when I remember end of May when he joined the national team camp, prior to these tournaments, he was... He was not in a good situation, to be honest. Very low self-confidence, uh, somehow distracted with all what was going on with the surprise of Kerala trying to sell him and release him. Mm. Uh, he was surprised because that was his home, you know, his fan base and all that. At the end, very, very uh, distracted with uh, clubs chasing him and all these talks and everything. And we helped him enormously to, to settle down, to focus on his game. We backed him up. I'm very proud of all the players who helped him to, to bounce back on his feet in a wonderful way and showing the country what he can do with the ball and settling down as a number 10 for India. So he is the first choice player there in the middle. He is the one who feels great at this position. And I need to tell you others, when we try them there, you know, when you bring players from the flanks into, into attacking midfield position in the center yeah. where you barely receive the ball throughout the mm -hmm. game, you have 10 to 15 balls. That's you it. need to mm -hmm. run a lot. You need to run seven, eight minutes to receive one ball. And if you miss it, then there is a lot of pressure on you. And Sahal is doing brilliantly now, better and better from game to the game. So I just hope that we can work out a few more things on his positioning because he's kind of a player who runs every game from 12 to 14 kilometers. But uh, uh, out of 14 kilometers, at least five are uh, not effective. Mm. You know, so yeah. so we need to rationalize his his runs. We need to make him more effective with less running. I would say, you know, that's mm. that's a great mm. point. And when I spoke with Mahesh Naurem about about that position, because he can play any position up front, he can. because yeah. he's kind of a player who who exceptionally well feels the the space, the time, mm. and his touches on the ball and passing and uh, off the ball runs were amazing. So. Mm. But the question is where he enjoys the most, mm. you know, and that's very important for me as a coach. So uh, when I ask him how you feel as a number 10, he said to me, not too happy coach. I don't get many balls there. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so yeah. but we have him as option there also. But yeah. I need to yeah. say we have uh, Brandon as option there, which uh, we would like to push more for a hard work to, to mm. make sure that he's not just giving us these bright seconds. We need, we need Brandon to give us uh, bright games, exceptional yeah. games, not only set, set pieces and other things. And also the third choice player on this position attacking midfield is Jasir, who is somehow now left behind. But I want to see him awakening and showing good things in ISL to, to get him back. Mm. Okay, um, I think that that pretty much does it, Coach. I think last uh, last bit maybe um, you you were kind enough to share with me some of your uh, perform reviews and and things like that and and, and some interesting uh, stats looking at the World Cup qualification process uh, this time for twenty two versus uh, the previous four year cycle which was for twenty eight uh, eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> passing accuracy is up uh, by a decent number. Maybe, I don't know, people will agree or not agree, but I think 7% uh, is a pretty decent Overall. Overall, overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh and uh, and a uh, uh, ball possession which is dramatically up i think 11% is the number that you have shared in in this that that's a big that's a big increase in uh, how much the team is holding the ball uh i don't think at least the latter figure in the next four year period will go up by a similar percentage point because that's not necessarily uh how you will play or, or approach things uh, but but what uh, what can fans uh, understand from some of these features of how the national team is developing uh, just uh, from a lay perspective from for people who uh, perhaps don't uh, or not don't but are cannot connect the dots between what one what a stat might mean and what that means in terms of what players are doing on the pitch and the work that is going on behind the scenes to get them to that level Listen, uh, stats sometimes can mislead you also, but I like to show them at the end of the cycle, certain mm. cycle, either qualifiers, and you can get the clear picture there when you compare qualifiers four years ago with qualifiers today or qualifiers today with four years, later. which is ahead of us later. They will tell you something. They will give you a certain answer, but they cannot tell you what have you seen you know for me the more important thing is are the fans happy with what they see on the mm. pitch mm. and the point where i'm happy the most was the the philosophy of football which we implemented into the team which was not effective so much indian team let's be honest four years ago was the team sitting back waiting to be killed you know barely going to counter attacks even against far lower ranked teams you know mm. just take the numbers and watch the games and i watched them many times when i was analyzing indian football against guam against all these teams in the qualifiers <laughs> it was always 50-50 game leaking at yeah. the back at many at many positions without compactness without uh, uh, compact lines without uh, discipline and organizational game in in defense uh, what i'm proud of that we are well aware that we need to be fit enough to keep our opponents away from our goal, away mm. from our box. That's that's the best possible defend you can get. You know, we are not leaking goals. If you look back at our record, even at the beginning of our work in the World Cup qualifiers, we conceded only seven goals out mm. of out of six games, and two of these games were gain, were against Asian champions at their home soil. You know, 180 minutes against Qatar, we conceded one goal. We yeah. didn't play well, but if you expect us to have a ball possession football against Asian champion in Qatar, then we cannot speak about football. You know, if you if you get the chance to make four or five counter attacks with the quality coming out and then stabilizing again in two blocks, that's what you can do. That's Absolutely. what you have. You get what you have. You know, so. Uh, what's worrying me now, I need to tell you, and, and the fans, they need to be well aware of it because mm. everybody's expecting us to keep doing the same thing, mm. which might be not possible because high intensity football and the high press football, which we produced during June and last three tournaments, which we played, not the King's Cup, I'm not mentioning that. We yeah. prepared the team for such football. Mm. You could witness that nine games in 26 days, which we played, we were just rising up as a team. Yeah. We were playing better and better, and we finished those uh, uh, nine games with the last two games, 120 minutes football of high press, without mm. stopping down while other teams were having cramps since the minute 60. And that mm. was obviously well prepared and well functioning. But we yeah. cannot do that. We cannot get to that point with uh, five days of camp or seven days of camp. That's yeah. the main reason why we are insisting on longer time for the national team to prepare. Because now when you go to Asian Cup in, in January, mm -hmm. you're going to face Australia, Uzbekistan and then Syria. And let's be, let's be clear now. And looking at everything, because our analysis started one month ago upon our opponents in Asian Cup. Mm. Our chance starts first with Australia. We need to get point there. Why I'm thinking about that surprising Australia? Because they will not have time to prepare. They will come from England, Italy, France, from their respective clubs, 
four or five days prior to the to the first game. Not only that, they will enjoy Christmas time and New Year Eve, which mm. we are not we shouldn't be allowed to enjoy and lose the nights in such mm. days. We need to stick together, prepare ten days and invest everything into getting the point out out of that game. Then we need to be realistic about Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is preparing six week camp for their team. They will go, they will prepare well, they are playing fantastic football, they are hammering all the teams which they are facing and they will be the most difficult opponent in our group for us. So if we get the point there, then our chance next is Syria, to win Syria, to, to go through. You know, that's, mm. that's how I see the full picture and that's how we need to, pre to prepare. So are we going to do that with high intensity football? No, not possible. We need to think about other things, how to approach the games. And I don't want our fans to be surprised. But what I can, what, what I can tell you, what I, what I can promise you, realistically, is the same thing which I promised you when we went uh, to Asian Games. We're going to leave everything on that pitch, every game, you know. And that's all I can ask from our players, wherever we go, whoever we play. All right. So, so in all of this, uh, Igor, then your November time with the team becomes, I think, your final sort of prep time, uh, and when, when, by when, perhaps you will uh, have figured out or know exactly what your alternative strategies are, because you are not uh, necessarily, like you were saying, going to be playing that high intensity, high press football all the time. Uh, what will? I don't know if you are in a position now to share. Uh, how you're looking at that period and, and what exactly it is that you will be working on in that time? Um, or, or, you know... No, no, listen, uh, November we have World Cup qualifiers. We need yeah. to make sure we get few points in those first two games. You know, otherwise we're going to be in a very difficult position. We're going to be in a position of chasing Kuwait and Qatar, which is always uh, bringing uh, unnecessary pressure on the team and on the boys. But uh, I'm no, not worried so much about that because I know if we survive throughout November and March uh, World Cup mm -hmm. qualifying phase that we're going to finish at least second in the group, you know. So that's, that's our uh, priority, that's our goal, uh, taking India for the first time into the third round of the World Cup qualifiers uh, and playing good football especially in, in our home soil. You know that we still have this huge problem playing away games, yeah. mostly because every time when we had FIFA window going to play away games, we didn't have more than two days to prepare. Time. And yeah. we were always going to play these games without four or five first 11 choice players. You yeah. know? So it is what it is. That's, that's how we need to survive still a few more months until the end of March, and then hopefully things will change for the benefit of the national team. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Igor. You've taken an hour uh, to chat with uh, 420 Grams uh, this evening while you were in the middle of some pretty serious preparation for uh, what uh, should be an exciting game. Um, and I think we, we might also get to see uh, some glimpses of what, what you are preparing the team for uh, in the next uh, months leading up to the Asian Cup in that game against Malaysia. Uh, so, all the best to you and to, to the rest of the team for that. Uh, sorry, I think we lost you uh, there for a second. But, but I was just saying thanks, uh, thanks very much for your time and all the best to you and the rest of the squad. And, and uh, hopefully, we catch up again uh, soon in a, in a couple of months to see how things develop. Uh, good to have you with us for another couple of years. Uh, and yeah, um, Hopefully, keep the conversations going. Thanks again.